talk about the advantages and uses of shoulder planes. Shoulder planes are primarily used for trimming tendon shoulders, hence the name. However, they're also used a lot in trimming tendon cheeks, as well as in creating rabbits, dados, grooves, half laps, basically any joinery where one side needs to be square to another. Let's get started by taking a look at the anatomy of a shoulder plane. The bottom of the plane is called the sole, just like our feet. And as with all planes, it's very important that this sole be flat. Lee Nielsen plane soles are ground flat when they're made, so you'll never need to worry about flattening a Lee Nielsen plane sole. The front of the sole is called the toe. The rear of the sole is the heel. And the opening where the blade comes out is called the mouth. If you're adjusting joinery with shoulder planes, you'll be taking shavings of one to two thousandths of an inch. If you're creating joinery, such as rabbits and dados, you'll likely be taking much thicker shavings. Our small, medium, and large shoulder planes have adjustable mouths so that you can adjust the size of the mouth opening to best fit the type of work that you're doing. Our bronze shoulder plane does not have an adjustable mouth. This plane is designed for fine fitting of joinery, and so the mouth is very tight. As the main purpose of a shoulder plane is to cut one surface square to another, it's very important that the sides of a shoulder plane be square to the sole. Up above on the body of the plane, we have the bronze cap. Let's remove the bronze cap and take a look at what's underneath. We can do this by taking the spin wheel just below and turning it counterclockwise as we look down on the cap. This will loosen the cap and we can then lift it out. The blade actually extends out past the sides of the planes by just a few thousandths of an inch on either side. The blade is held bevel up. To remove the blade, we'll actually need to take it, turn it 90 degrees, and carefully lift it out of the plane, making sure that we don't hit the cutting edge of the blade on any part of the plane body as it's coming out. Now that the blade's out, we see a little notch on the back of the blade. This notch will go right onto the adjuster nut here. Below the blade, we have the frog, where the blade sits. On this plane, the frog is an integral part of the body and is angled at 18 degrees. The 18 degrees of the frog, along with the 25 degrees of the primary blade bevel, gives us an effective pitch of 43 degrees for this plane. We'll go ahead and put the blade back in, basically reversing the motion that we used to take it out, putting it in and then turning it 90 degrees and laying it down. Now let's make sure that we get the slot in properly. And now we'll put the bronze cap back on. Make sure that the pivot point is seated fully into the notch and tighten down the spin wheel by turning the spin wheel clockwise. Tightening the spin wheel does two things. It puts pressure on the blade here to hold it into place, and because we have a pivot point here, as the back of the bronze cap comes up, the front comes down, putting extra pressure on the blade right next to the cutting edge. The last part of this plane's anatomy that we should talk about is the adjustable shoe. On the small, medium, and large planes, this adjustable shoe will move, allowing us to tweak that size of the mouth opening for the type of shavings that we wish to take. Let's talk about the adjustments. We're going to use this medium shoulder plane as an example, but all of the adjustments we make here on the medium plane are also able to be made on our small and large shoulder planes. We're going to start by learning how to adjust the mouth opening. To start, We'll loosen up the lock screw on the top of the plane. Loosen this up by half a turn. Then we can take the mouth adjuster screw in the front and turn this counterclockwise to open up that mouth or clockwise to close the mouth. When you're closing the mouth, Make sure that you don't run the shoe into the cutting edge of the blade because you can damage or dull your blade by doing so. Once you've got the shoe set to the mouth opening that you'd like, go ahead and lock that setting into place by retightening the lock screw on the top of the plane. 
Next, we have the lateral adjustment of the blade. Shoulder planes, as we said before, excel in cutting one surface square to another surface. We also mentioned that the blade is just a few thousandths wider than the plane itself. We want to make sure that our blade is flush to the side of the plane that we're going to be using as our reference side. For example, with this rabbit, the side of the plane that's going to be referencing up against this side of the rabbit is our reference side of the plane. So we want to make sure that the blade is flush to this side of the plane. To do so, we'll loosen up this spin wheel just a little bit and place the reference side down on a known flat surface. And press down on the blade to flush up the side of the blade with the reference side of the plane. Then we can go ahead and tighten up that spin wheel. We don't want to over tighten the spin wheel, but we want to snug that up. And then we can double check that to make sure that the blade is not hanging out over the frog on our reference side. We can also make sure that our blade is square to the sole by taking a small shim and taking shavings at a couple of points along the blade. We have the same thickness shavings on several different points along here, so we know that our blade is going to be parallel and square to the sole. Lastly, we have the depth adjustment. On the small, medium, and large shoulder planes, the blade depth is controlled by the adjuster nut just at the back of the blade. We can loosen up the spin wheel by an eighth to a quarter of a turn and take this adjuster nut and turn it clockwise to bring the blade down for thicker shavings or counterclockwise to bring the blade up for thinner shavings. If we've brought the blade up, we always want to end by taking this adjuster nut and turning it back to clockwise just until we start feeling resistance in order to remove the backlash within the mechanism. Once our depth is set, we'll go ahead and snug up that spin wheel again, but make sure you don't over tighten the spin wheel. For the small bronze shoulder plane, we're going to be setting the lateral and depth adjustments at the same time. To remove this wedge, simply tap the plane on the back with either a wooden mallet or a brass hammer. This will loosen up the wedge. We don't recommend hitting the back of this plane with anything harder than a brass hammer in order to prevent damage to the back of the plane. Again, we're going to use this left side of the plane as our reference side. So we're going to put this left side down on the workbench and set for depth and lateral adjustments at the same time. Keep in mind that as you're manually setting the depth of the blade, that as the wedge tightens, it will push the blade down a little bit further, causing you to take a slightly thicker shaving than what you have set. Once you've gotten the blade set, go ahead and push the wedge in, just snug enough to be able to pick up the plane, and we'll double check to make sure that no part of the blade is hanging over the frog on our reference side. Once we're happy with that adjustment, go ahead and put a little bit more hand pressure to snug up that wedge. You'll never want to hit the wedge with a hammer in order to try and drive it in. Over tightening the wedge could cause damage to both the wedge and the plane. Once our wedge has been set, go ahead and use a wooden shim to test the blade here. Again, to make sure that our blade is indeed square to the sole. And we're all set. Now that these planes have been adjusted, let's put them to work. Mm -hmm.